So you're having a lot of fun with the Osmo Pocket, but you're looking to step up your game a bit. Today I'm going to show you how to ditch your amateur status and go pro with the Osmo Pocket. First off, I want to thank you for joining me. If you've watched my videos in the past, it's no secret. I really enjoy using the Osmo Pocket. I think it's a fantastic little camera and I really enjoy making videos on this camera on my YouTube channel. You can subscribe if you'd like. Today we're talking about Pro Mode and maybe you want to switch from going Auto Mode to Pro Mode. Maybe, maybe we can get you a medal if you do that switch. Can we do that? Can we, we have it in the budget for a medal for everyone that switches to, to Auto to Pro? We don't have that in the budget? We don't have it in the budget. I mean, they give it to kids at uh, soccer. Can't we, can't borrow theirs? No, no. All right, there may or may not be a medal if you switch from auto mode to pro mode in today's video. That would be fantastic. In late November, 2018, DJI came out with the Osmo Pocket. It was a fantastic little camera, something no one's really seen before. Had a little gimbal head on a tiny camera. People thought this was the weirdest camera. But once people started buying it, they really started to enjoy it. However, Pro Mode was available only if you attach the phone to the camera. Now, if you're like me, you don't really like doing that. I like the small form factor of the Osmo as is just as a camera, and I don't really like attaching the phone. I find it a little bit more bulky and a little bit more cumbersome to carry around and to use. If you like using the phone, that's fantastic. I have used the phone with it, and it is fun. I do enjoy it, but for me, I really enjoy the small form factor of just the camera itself. Now, jump ahead a couple months to February 2019, DJI came out with a firmware update that allowed you to have full pro mode on the camera itself where you didn't need to attach the phone to the camera. I found this fantastic and I know a lot of people were really waiting for this and they came out and they really enjoyed this function. So what does pro mode really allow you to do? How much of a difference does it give you in your footage than going in auto mode? First, let's look how to get to pro mode, whether you're in the camera or on your phone. First thing you want to do to access Pro Mode on your phone is to fire up the DJI Mimo app. Make sure you're on the latest firmware. Next, you're going to hit the three little dots on the bottom left of this app. This is going to launch the video tab. Here you can see you have the basic options and if you go a little bit further you have the Pro tab and this will give you your Pro settings. Right away you have access to video format, either MP4 or MOV, whatever works for you is great. The basic tab will also have this option. But as you can see, you have white balance and color profile options right away. And if you go further down the menu, you're going to see even more options. So that's how you access Pro Mode on the phone with the Mimo app. We'll go over the options in a bit more detail a little bit later. Now to access Pro Mode without the phone and just the camera itself, you'll take your hopefully normal sized fingers and swipe down from the top of the screen. Now, if you have giant fingers, I'm sorry, you're just out of luck. We can't help you here. Luckily, my fingers are small enough to work this screen because it is a tiny screen. Now, you will see the settings screen, and if you scroll to the left, you will see the Pro tab. Press it once. Now, you are in Pro mode. This can really mess up your video at this point, so be careful. Just kidding. To confirm you're in Pro mode, you will see a little yellow Pro icon at the top left of the screen. Now, if you click on this tiny Pro icon, it will jump into the next screen. From here, you can make adjustments to your color profile, your white balance, your exposure, and your audio. So that's how you access Pro Mode on the camera without the phone attached. Now, being able to set your white balance on the Osmo Pocket through Pro Mode is a massive bonus. A lot of other cameras allow you to do this, which is great. But the fact that Osmo allows you to pick your Kelvin temperature or your color temperature is amazing. Now, shooting in auto or some of the other presets, you can get some good results, but you need to be careful when you're shooting outdoors or indoors and your lighting conditions change, you need to make sure your white balance changes to accommodate that. If you don't change it, you're going to get some weird colors and your shots aren't going to match and it's going to be a pain in the butt to edit. Now let's talk about shutter for a bit. A lot of people get intimidated when it comes to shutter because there's so many different options and it changes a lot for photos to videos. When you're shooting video, you're trying to get the 180 rule. What does that mean? Well, let's just say you're shooting 60 frames per second because that's the shot you want. Maybe you want to slow things down later on. Now your shutter should be 120. If your shutter is lower than that, you're going to see some odd things in your video. If you keep it at the 180 rule at 120 
for 60 frames per second, you're going to get some nice motion blur. Now, motion blur is what's going to give you those nice cinematic shots. Sometimes people really don't care about that, and that's why you go into auto mode, and it'll adjust your shutter to match everything else, and that's fine. But if you want to get those shots with a nice motion blur, you're going to have to use pro mode, and you're going to have to use the 180 roll. Now, it's really not that complicated if you think about it. Now, I told you when you're at 60 frames, your shutter should be at 120. Now, if you're going to shoot 24 frames, which I like to shoot most of my stuff, your shutter is going to be 48 or the next closest to it, which is 50. And that'll give you the motion blur and the cinematic shots that you want. Now, just keep in mind, the higher the frame rate that you're shooting at, the higher your shutter is going to be. So make sure you plan that out while you're doing your shoot. Now, of course, another important factor when it comes to your shutter is the use of ND filters. If you haven't used ND filters, you should try them. They work fantastic on the little pocket. They just clip onto the lens with a magnet and they give you some really fantastic results and they allow you to control the shutter to what you want. I actually shot a previous video on ND filters and it can be quite helpful. If you're using ND filters, you know how important they are. If you're not, give them a try. Now, another important option you have is your autofocus modes. You have AFC and AFS. AFC is autofocus continuous, which a lot of people will use if they're shooting video and they're tracking somebody or they're just shoot, shooting somebody that's moving and that's fine. Or you can use autofocus singular if you want to shoot somebody that's not moving a lot and you want to have control of that autofocus. I use both fairly frequently and I actually enjoy autofocus single if I have control and I know there's not a lot of movement in the shot. Well, if there's a lot of movement, too bad I have to hit it to AFC and track it that way. Now, another important factor that we received with a firmware update was color profiles. Sure, you only have two. You have Cine, which will give you a very similar look to S-Log or C-Log, where everything will look kind of gray and dull that you can color or color correct later in post. If you don't want to color correct in post, I mean, that's fine. You can use the color mode. It'll give you pretty good colors, but you just don't have as much play in post to get exactly the colors that you like. So try them out and see what works for you. Now, if you know for sure that you're not going to color correct later on, either you're too lazy or you just don't know how to exactly get the colors that you want, that's fine. Stay with your color mode. It's going to give you some pretty good results. Sure, you won't be able to adjust things maybe the way you could in cine mode uh, in post-production, but you'll get something that you really like and I think that's fine. But don't be intimidated. Give it a try. Shoot in cine and see what you can do with it. If it doesn't work for you, that's fine. The only thing I would suggest is that you're, if you're not 100% sure, you don't want to ruin it by shooting in cine and maybe you should go with color mode. But if you practice it, you never know. You might get good at it and you might really enjoy the look. Now, another important factor when it comes to ISO compared to auto mode and manual mode, if you shoot in auto mode and you're shooting, let's just say somebody in front of a boat and then you want to pan up and see the beautiful sky. Now, if you're going to go do that in auto mode, it's going to change your ISO as you're shooting and it might ruin your shot. However, if you take that same shot, you set your ISO to what you want it to be, then you can make your pan or make your move, but the ISO will always stay constant because you set it manually. If you do it in auto, you're not 100% sure what you're going to get. And the ISO will automatically change as your conditions change. Now, if you have your phone attached, you can use your zebra levels on your phone to tell you exactly where your hotspots are on your shots. Now, you can't do that just on the camera itself because the little screen is too small and you really can't tell if there's zebras on there. So they give you that option when you have the bigger phone attached to it. And it's actually a pretty good option. I use professional cameras all the time. And this is a big feature on professional cameras. You set your ISO to whatever level you want and you'll see it peaking. And they call it zebra levels because on your camera, it looks like zebras. Now, you use this so that you don't peak and get too hot of a shot. I really enjoy that. I wish it was on the camera itself, but I understand the little screen is too small to put zebras on something like that. Now the Osmo gives you a pretty cool little function that you normally see on more high-end cameras. Now I'm talking about the EV meter. Now this EV meter pretty much tells you what it thinks should be the right level. So if it gives you an EV of plus one or plus two, it's probably telling you there's too much light coming into the camera right now. You better do something to change it because your shot's going to be too hot. And vice versa, if you get a negative one, a negative two, it's telling you the shot's probably going to be too dark. Now, I wouldn't use this EV meter as the be all because you're not 100% sure that that level is correct on the camera and it's telling you, hey, I know better. I know what your level is supposed to be. Now, 
I would use this as a guide and I can look at it quickly. You can tell, yeah, you know what? My shot looks pretty good. It's a little bit minus, but I think I want to go with that. I'm going to stay with that. But you can use this meter to give you a good judgment of the idea of your level and what it should be at so that you know that you're pretty darn close to the level that you should be and you're going to get the shot that you kind of want. Now, pro mode isn't just for video. You can get it in your photos as well. You can change your settings if you want to have JPEG or RAW or just JPEG shots. You can change all that in the pro modes as well. Now, this camera also gives you fantastic manual modes over other functions. You have complete control over your time lapses, hyperlapses, and motion lapses. You can control whatever settings that you want. That's fantastic. You can get the shots that you're looking for. You can play with different levels, different speeds and stuff to see what works for you and maybe you want to go this way with it and maybe you want to go that way with it. But the great thing about having manual control is that you control it. Try it one way. If it doesn't work, try it another way. Hopefully that will work for you. This way you can use the settings to get the shot that you're looking for. Now the big thing I want you to take away from this video is that going in pro mode can be fantastic for your camera. You can get the shots that you want when you control the settings that you want. However, I don't want you to be intimidated and think that I'm going to try pro mode and if it doesn't work quickly, I'm going to go back to auto mode. Test out pro mode, test out the different settings, your ISO, your shutter, and see what works. If it doesn't work, that's okay. It doesn't mean that you made mistakes. It just means that you have to make slight adjustments to get the shots that you want. Auto mode is fine, but if you're looking to pick up your game and get the shots that you want, give it a try in pro mode. If it doesn't work, that's okay. You have no idea how much B-roll I have that just didn't work. And I was shooting in pro mode and I thought it was the shot that I wanted, but I just screwed up. That's okay. You have all this footage stored on a big card and never use it again. That's fine. But some of that stuff is going to be really good shots. And if you use pro mode, you're going to get the look that you want and you're going to be super happy with it. This tiny little gimbal is super smooth and it gives you some fantastic results. You just need to play around with it. Of course, you're going to screw up and that's fine. That's why the editing room is there to get rid of all those bad shots. I mean, I can make a pile unbelievably high with all my bad shots. Maybe I'm about 30% stuff that I use. As I use the pocket more, I get better and I get more confident and I look ahead of time at the shots that I want. Maybe I'll practice it and then I'll shoot. But if I screw up, that's okay. I'm still learning this thing too and so are you. So don't be intimidated to try out pro mode. So hopefully with this video, if you're on the fence about using pro mode, hopefully it's given you a little bit more confidence. If you're using pro mode already, let me know some of your favorite features on pro mode. I really appreciate you taking the time and joining me for this video. Hopefully you learned something and you're ready to turn pro. Congratulations.